Was Eddie Van Halen a Vinnie Vincent fan? How's it going, everyone? You're watching Sight Sounds Flavors on YouTube, SightSoundsFlavors.com. If you like this video at any time, smash that like button. Also, guys, please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and if you haven't done so already, leave a comment. So, lots of people have been asking me because I read pretty much every book out there, autobiographies, documentaries I watch, you know, autos, self-autos, you know what I mean, unauthorized, whatever I read about bands. And I also talk to a lot of rockers. I talk to a lot of folks that maybe weren't, you know, playing the guitar or playing the drums, but were backstage, not groupies, but were, you know, like, you know, tech people, roadies, you know, which covers a lot of things. That covers, you know, sound techs. It covers, you know, scaffolding people. It covers security. I mean, roadies are everything in a band and I've met quite a few and one rumor that uh, I've heard quite a bit of and again I don't know if it's true or not so I'm actually going to kind of ask you guys what you think because I don't know for sure but I have heard over the years from trusted people and you know from just everyday people that you see on the message boards there aren't a lot of message boards anymore but you know like Facebook groups and that sort of thing and it was that Eddie Van Halen was a huge Vinnie Vincent fan. Now, before those of you out there that hate the Ankh Warriors say that's preposterous, hold on. Right around the time that Eddie Van Halen allegedly wanted to join KISS was right after Ace Frehley had been replaced. Now, if you know your KISS history, you know that that's true. You know that he asked Gene, not Paul. Paul has no recollection. But he asked Gene if he could join the band. Gene said they were going to work with Vincent Cusano, which would later become Vinnie Vincent. Gene named Vinnie Vincent. And, you know, I don't know if there was a rivalry there or not that ensued when Gene Simmons, bass player, lead vocalist of KISS, one half of the sort of governing body, basically, had seen Saul Hudson, who would later become Slash, too young for the part, had seen Bob Kulik, had seen Bruce Kulik, for whatever reason they didn't pick Bruce. They saw Vincent Cusano, they saw Eddie Van Halen, they saw Richie Sambora from Bon Jovi. And so, the interesting about it is that it sounds like Eddie might have been, you know, one of these, you know, super group type members and wouldn't really need to audition. I mean, you know, his guitar skills preceded him. He was a West Coast rocker. And the reality of the matter is, is that, you know, he could party hardy and he knew how to, you know, work an audience. You know, to replace Ace Frehley isn't, wasn't like, you know, just, you know, some easy task. Unfortunately, Peter, they replaced without really much work because they didn't like Peter. And Peter had been, you know, kind of fading there a little bit. They brought in Eric Carr, who like basically buried Peter Chris uh, to quote Exposed, because Exposed or one of those videos, it's the truth. Eric buried Peter Chris. However, Peter had a lot of jazz components, which are fantastic if you like jazz. But if you're like me, who likes hard rock and metal, I don't care about jazz or music dynamics. So honestly, Eric Carr was way better, way better than Peter Chris. So that was an easy thing to do. But Ace, he wasn't part of that ruling council ever. It wasn't Gene Paul and Ace, but Ace was extremely talented, extremely talented, very close with Paul. And, uh, you know, could produce, could sing. They made him sing, which shocked me. But from then on, he was singing two, three lead vocals per album. He had his Spaceman uh, character. A lot of people had seen him on the Tom Snyder show and couldn't, you know, they couldn't get enough of Ace. <clears throat> but, you know, the problem is, is that Ace was leaving. And as you all know the story, Paul went to his house in Connecticut or wherever and begged him to stay. And they went out shopping the whole day and they hung out. And at the end of the day, he said, I still want to leave. 
They said he could have a solo. They wouldn't have to cut them in, which is shocking because Ace Frehley solos, unlike Peter Chris, Paul Stanley, and Gene Simmons solos, actually sell a lot of records. But they wanted to keep him in the band. They were willing to let him have a solo career. Kind of like, think about Jason Newstead and Metallica. He has to put out one little side project, and they said, no, you can't do it. Even though you've been in the band 14 years, you can't do it. And over here, Gene and Paul in 83, 82, 83, 82, were telling um, Ace, or actually it could have been 83, because Ace did a, a very short uh, European TV tour in 83. So um, anyways, you know, the thing is, is that he wasn't going to stay. They could give him a solo career. They could give him more off time. He wanted out because by the time he left, they had done Unmasked. Well, first of all, they had done Dynasty, and Ace didn't like Dynasty. He didn't like disco. Okay, he was a rocker. Okay, then they did Unmasked, which was more disco. Then they did The Elder, which was trash. Even though Ace has songs on The Elder, like two or three, like I said, he was doing two. He was doing actually on Dynasty. Ace wrote more than Gene. He had four. Gene had three. Unheard of. So Ace was really stepping it up. But the thing is, after uh, Dynasty. It was like Unmasked was like Dynasty 2, but The Elder, there's something about The Elder. I think Ace was okay even playing disco music, but The Elder was just, he just didn't like it. And so when he left the band, imagine Gene having his pick between Vinnie Vincent, Vinnie Cunsano, who would later become Vinnie Vincent, and Eddie Van Halen, and Gene picked Vinnie Vincent. Imagine how that must have made Eddie Van Halen feel. You know what I mean? Like, you know? He was already a superstar, but yet Gene wanted Vinny. Because the thing is, I think that Gene and Paul, I don't think Eric, because Eric wasn't part of the decision-making process, I don't think. But I know, I probably I shouldn't say I know, but I'm pretty sure from reading all these books. But Gene and Paul saw the wizardry of Vinny Vincent, and they knew they were at such a low in their careers. Uh, you guys have all heard the quality of groupies that they had uh, towards the beginning of the, uh, towards the end of The Elder. Uh, a lot of Mrs. Garrett types, you know, um, a lot of Shirley's from, from uh, what's that show called with the rerun and all that? Uh, I don't remember what that show is called. Um, what the hell is that show called? Uh, what, what, what? it's not good times that's not good time what's the show called that rerun was on Shirley was on um well anyways it doesn't matter I don't know why the hell we were talking about that but the point is is that re the reality of the matter is is that Vinny all Vinny had you know, was maybe that's why I was mentioning. He had like some credits on on some TV shows or whatever, and I think he played with with Don Hartman or Don Imus or whatever. The guy, I don't know who the guy's name is. Dan Hartman, maybe. I don't know who that is. I just know that Vinny played with him, and so many people like Dan or Don or whatever the guy's name is were blessed because they were able to work with Vinny Vincent. Here I am in 2024 talking about a guy I don't even know, but I only know him because he worked with Vinny Vincent. They could have picked Richie Sambora. They could have picked Slash. You know, Saul Hudson would never have joined Guns N' Roses. And they probably never would have broke like they did and been like huge hits. You know? I mean, how do you think that that makes Slash feel? You know? Like, even, even during Appetite of Destruction. You know, 87. You know? A big year for the invasion, by the way. And Appetite comes out, or was that 89? I think Lies came out in 87. I think, well, whatever it came up. But could you imagine, you know, uh, Slash or Richie Sambora or especially Eddie Van Halen seeing Vinnie Vincent, especially during the height of the invasion when they were selling nearly 400,000 units in the United States. You know, they had videos all over MTV. You know, beautiful women everywhere were getting into auto acts. Oh my God, there's Vinnie Vincent. You know, there's Bobby Rock. There's... That's not Robert Fleischman. And there's Dwayne. I mean, the ladies were going crazy, you know, and some gentlemen too, but they don't go that way. What way is that? I don't know. 
I just know I can't drive 55. But the thing is, the Vinnie Vincent invasion was just groundbreaking. What did Van Halen ever do? I'm talking about LA, okay, California, the Western United States. Really, what did they contribute to rock? You know? I mean, at least we're, we're, we're comparing. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. We're comparing them to VVI. When you think about it, let's be real here. Who gave more to rock music as we know it here in the mountains of South Florida? Who contributed more, Eddie Van Halen or Vinnie Vincent, to rock music as we know it? I rest my case. I rest my case. That's obviously Vinnie Vincent. So, just, you can't base everything on record sales, okay? Did Van Halen outsell The Invasion? Of course. The Invasion only had two albums and only one sung by Robert Fleischman. The other album was sung by that other singer and you can't compare that, you know? So imagine if The Invasion had 10 of those 1986 albums, who would be bigger? Honestly, I'm not talking about around the world. I'm just talking about the United States of America. I mean, amongst metal fans. Okay, so so I keep I keep qualifying it, but okay, Eddie Van Halen, Van Halen, probably they would have sold more. I'll give you that, okay? But real rock fans, like real rock fans, would like almost all pick the Vinnie Vincent Invasion, right? I know that I would. So anyways, I'm sure that Eddie had a lot of that, you know, but... I think he secretly loved Vinny and the Vinny Vincent invasion. What do you think?